Pastor Mike McClure is one of the gift, most gifted men I know. You hear him sing like that, you'll go to Birmingham, and he's got uh, the mega ministry there in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, has done phenomenal things. Uh, one more time for Pastor Mike Jr. I got to be honest with you. Um, I came out here and they were already in my key and I almost started hooping too because it just felt like it. But I remember uh, growing up in Gary, Indiana. And as I was, uh, we, we grew up in an apartment complex. It was called Westbrook. And um, apartment complex is a nice way of saying the projects. And uh, it was four or five of us in there with two bedrooms. And I have to remember because it's not the shower that I have now that I remember. It's that porcelain bathtub that mama used to put us all in the same water and it used to leave that ring around it. And we used to get a whooping for leaving a ring in the tub and we didn't have Fabuloso like you young folks, we had Comet. <clears throat> and Ajax, and it came in a can, and it was powder, but at the end, it was a little ball that always survived, the shake. It was always a little ball in the bottom, and it survived the shake, and, and you had to cut it open to get what was left in the bottom. I soon realized in my life that after life finishes shaking you, the rest can't be extracted until you're cut. And those were the cutting days. And we started that church with five people in those days. And it grew to 600 in the town that only had 5,000 5, African Americans. And before I do this, I, I've got to do this. Give me, it's my birthday. I'm going to take two couple minutes. That when I was being cut, uh, before there was ever a mega church, before there was ever a lighthouse church, when I was driving a 1991 Ford Escort, navy blue interior and exterior, my sister Ebony and I had to share it. There was a young man named Pastor Tanae Jordan who saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And I was angry then, and I was frustrated then. And he raised me in this house, and he and his wife fed me three times a day until I was able to get on my feet, and they are here today. Pastor Jordan, Mama Jordan, would you just come and stand here for, y'all have to see these people. You have to see this man. You have to see this woman. I had to show y'all them. <clears throat> he showed me what it was like to be a man. I remember one day he went to Jamaica. He took his wife to Jamaica. And they go to Jamaica every year for vacation. And he came back and the power had went out in his house. And uh, there was a deep freezer. He would always go buy fresh meat. He had a deep freezer this big with meat and I remember um, this is the one day I never liked him. It's because he came back and the power went out. We were gone for two weeks and when we got back. As soon as we turned the corner to come in this neighborhood, we smelled something. And it, it was the smell of hundreds of pounds of rotting meat in his garage. Maggots were crawling out of the deep freezer. And I said, Pop, what are we going to do? I said, I, I tell you what, we can rent a truck and we can put the deep freezer on the truck, go to the dumpster and push it off. He said, I'm not throwing away my deep freezer. <laughs> he made us open that deep freezer and scrape all that stuff out. I didn't eat meat for six months because I couldn't stand the smell of it. And now I'm even more angry because now I'm old enough to know that that doggone deep freezer was $100. 
I thought it was expensive back then. He taught me what it was to be a man. I honor you, and I thank you so much. So one man watered me, but another man raised me. And the person who's coming to this stage would not know me if it were not for him, but you would not know me if it were not for him. He gave me my first big chance, loved me when I didn't love myself, has coached me through the most difficult moments of my life, has never judged me once, and has lifted me time and time again. At his own expense, has stuck his neck out to ensure that I could keep my head up. And he's in this place today. And before he comes to this stage, he would do this. Because she doesn't know it, she has made a tremendous difference in my life. There is no woman in the earth like Sarita Jakes. Can you praise God for the woman who has been the wind beneath his wings? I love you and I appreciate you. I want you to put your hands together and welcome to this stage the man who over 40 years ago stumped his foot and the whole world shook, who has preached on every continent in this globe. But today, the world's bishop has convened to stand in this secret and sacred place. Would you praise God for Bishop Thomas Dexter Jakes? Bishop T.D. Jakes, come on, make some noise! Come on and clap your hands like you really love Jesus. Come on and clap those hands like you really love Jesus. I don't mean like you church people. I mean like you got the Holy Ghost. Yes, 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 yes. Sit down in the name of Jesus and rest in the presence of the Lord. Grace and peace. I am just bum fuzzled. I don't know what to look at first. I'm all emotion rated. Uh, Pastor introduced Pastor Jordan. I was about to start crying. I thought, fool, they didn't feed you. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know what's going on. I'm looking at this beautiful church that keeps evolving every time I come back. Give yourselves a round of applause. Aren't you glad you go to a church where you don't have to wonder where the money is going? He puts it right where you can see it. Come on, make some noise, somebody. Oh, oh y'all get out of here. Let me tell you something. Some folks been in a building fund drive for 35 years. You better get up on your feet and make some noise in this place. Yeah, y'all don't know nothing about that old school. We raising money for the building fund. We, we in the building fund drive. Everybody give another thousand dollars for the building fund. There don't never be no building. Y'all sitting up in a metropolis going on down here in Houston. Clap one more time for the good leadership, good stewardship, good staffing, good commitment, good accounting, good business principles. A lot of people can preach, but everybody can't lead. Come on, let's honor the man of God for being a leader. There's a big difference between being a good preacher and being a good leader. And you got both. And he can sing too. Glory to God. I tell you, he just got everything. It ain't fair. It ain't fair. He all trim and fit and everything. I got a little jealous. I tried to pray a little fat on him and, you know, just to even things up a little bit so it'd be a fair fight. <laughs> he already got me about 20 some years. And that joker got in the gym and wore me out. Give God praise for Pastor Keon. I love you. I love you. Well, I don't really know how I got here. I have to explain. Sit down, relax. I, I have to explain how I got here. I didn't exactly get invited. I sort of got invited. He called me up on the phone and said, you know, they're planning my 40th birthday. 
and the staff is all excited about who all they could bring. And your name was one of the first names to come up, but the first name to come up. He said, and I told him, well, no, we can't, uh, we can't bother him. He got so much to do, you know. I said, oh, that's so sweet, and I hung up the phone. <laughs> you know, and about, it took me about two days to realize that he was trying to sneak up on an invitation. I called him back. I said, was that your way of trying to invite me to come? He burst out and started laughing. But I, I am here because every time I ever needed you, you were always there. He was at my Megafest event, and I had a strange thing happen to my eye. My eye was, my contact had gotten my eye infected, and my eye was bleeding. And it was bleeding so much I had to go to the emergency room. And he had, he, he had just been with me. Everything was fine. I was fine till, till it happened. I was fine. When it happened, I couldn't even see. I couldn't even see at all. He had, he had driven back to Houston made a U-turn and drove all the way back to Dallas to see if I was okay. That's the kind of pastor you got. Isn't that good? Now, I want to do something at the top and get all the mushy stuff done at first. Um, my son asked me, my natural son asked me, Daddy, how do you get to sit at the table with, with the chiefs. He said, the young people are trying to figure out how to get at the table with the chiefs. I said, you don't get to sit at the table just because you want to. I said, you got to go out and kill something. I said, if you're going to sit around the fire with the elders, you got to go out and kill something, bring a lion, throw a dead lion down or something like that. They'll respect you. They're not going to respect you because you have the desire. They're going to respect you because you kill something. David was anointed to be king over Israel. Saul anointed him to be king, but he didn't bring him into the kingdom because he hadn't killed anything. The gateway to the kingdom always has something that has to be killed because you earn the right to be respected by the level you kill on. You understand what I'm saying? You don't get it because you think you're supposed to have it. You don't get it because you have my last name. You don't get it because you got a PhD. You get it because you withstood something. You endured something. You built something. You fought for something. You survived something. You endured something. And then people respect you. Respect is never given. It must be earned. To commemorate it this day, I wanted to make this presentation to you. As a, as a part of our birthday gift, my wife and I, to you, because you killed something. Come here. you to put it somewhere every time you run into a battle just to remind you that giants do die. They do die. And when you cut their head off, put them under your feet. Yeah. That represents everything you had to kill to get to where you are right now at 40 years old. That means you get to sit at the fire with the elders. That means this is official. That means you are a grown man. Yeah, in every sense of the word. And don't ever let anybody make you doubt yourself who you are, what you are, where you came from. Jesus couldn't be Jesus until John pointed him out. 
And when John pointed him out, he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And it all started because a man pointed him out and a God spoke from heaven. And so with this tribute today, we point you out. God has already spoken from heaven. Kill it. I want to honor my wife. You may be seated. I honor my wife. Stand up, baby. Show them what I'm working with. <laughs> I want all of my spiritual sons that are here to stand. All of you, all of you. I see several of you stayed over. I'm glad to give God praise for them. You stayed over to be here. Or maybe you stayed over to go shopping, but you're here. I'm glad to see you nonetheless. Wow, I'm at the lighthouse. I sent my daughter, Sarah, to my church so I could come to your church. So we're playing musical chairs. I hope I have a church when I get back. <laughs> I thought it would preach good, but not like real good. <laughs> she get dangerous. Go to the book of Ruth for just a few moments today. The Ruth chapter 2, verse 1, 2, 3. in the second chapter of the book of Ruth. When you have it, say amen. I'm going to read out the King James Version. There's no particular theological reason that I'm reading out of the King James Version other than the fact that it's old and I'm old. And we've been hanging out so long, ain't no need in breaking up now. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, let me go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. She gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hat was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. Can you say amen? amen. Remain standing. I'm going to pray with you. The, re the real thing that I want to focus on is not so much the text, but the heading of the text Ruth chapter 2, I want to use a subject, the second chapter. So if you miss the wordings, remember the number. Look at somebody and say, this is the second chapter. Spirit of the living God. Oh, fresh of us today. I await your rain. I wake up to the dew falling on the roses. I recognize your mercies are new every morning. You have assembled us out of our homes and from our towns and our villages and some have driven away to be in this place today. Not that we might hear me, but that we might hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. In times like these, we need a word from you. In times like these, we need direction from you. In times like these, we need prophetic utterances from you. Speak, Lord, for thy silent hears your word. Speak, we 
can't move if you don't speak we can't breathe if you don't speak we can't talk if you don't speak we can't walk if you don't speak we can't think if you don't speak we can't decide we need a word from you if we don't hear from you what shall we do if we don't hear from you where shall we go if we don't hear from you what shall we say take over the service throw your weight around show hell who's boss Move cancer out the building, diseases out the building, affliction out the building, turmoil out the building, distress, depression, and fear. You can take anything that says exit on it. You got to go today. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for what you're about to do, Spirit of the Living God. Have your way. Ah, I'll be careful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' mighty and righteous name we pray. Every believer in the house, shout amen! You may be seated in the presence of God. It is distressing to note that the particular book that is before us today is reserved for Mother's Day, Women's Days. First Lady's Days and things of that ilk. It is because of the hidden misogynic philosophy of our society where we have categorized the value of the text by the gender rather than the depth of the revelation. It is deceptive to believe that God has decorated the Old Testament with the ornate ornament of a feminine character just to suggest that he has diversity in the way he thinks. It is not her gender that is of paramount importance. It is her movement. It is the way she moves. It is what moved when she moved. If, if the book of Ruth were not in the Bible, there would be no book of Judges, no book of Kings. There would be no book of Kings. There would be no books of history. The psalmist would never sing the psalms if the book of Ruth were not in the Bible. If the book of Ruth were not in the Bible, Zephaniah would never utter a prophetic word. Can I take my time? If the book of Ruth were not in the Bible, Malachi would have never been written. If the book of Ruth were not in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John would not be categorized amongst the scriptures. 27, 27 books of the New Testament would be obliterated. They are all predicated upon this particular book. This book, the book of Ruth, is really about change. Somebody shall change. change. The Lord said to me at the beginning of the pandemic, he said, when you pray for change, I answer with disruption. And when I send disruption, don't allow the disruption to become a distraction. Because most people think solving the disruption is victory. When in fact, I sent the disruption to facilitate the change. You can't have change without disruption. Everything has to be disrupted in order to change. You can't keep your waistline and have a baby. Change is disruptive. <laughs> you can't plant an acorn in the ground and tell it not to disrupt the soil because growth itself is disruptive. 
wherever there is change, it will always enunciate itself by the level of the disruption that precedes it. The book of Ruth is more than a display of femininity. It is, in fact, a book of disruption. It starts with disruption. How you handle disruption determines how far you can go. Hear me good. Hear me good. If you can't handle disruption, then stop praying for change. Most people can't handle disruption because they allow the disruption to become a distraction. And they stop their mission to settle the disruption as if settling the disruption was victory. This is why Nehemiah did not respond to Sanballat and Tobias because they were a disruption. The victory was in ignoring the disruption and staying on the wall. Second thing he said to me, in the midst of the disruption, it will always want to be a distraction because every disruption presents an opportunity. That will only mean something to people whose lives have been disrupted, whose jobs have been disrupted. By the way, y'all sang your face off. Excuse me, that don't have nothing to do with the text. You know a person can sing when they sing so well you think you can. <laughs> Brother got the moaning in the mic. I, I tried to moan too. I sound like a frog with a sore throat. Disruption! <laughs> Disruption comes into all of our lives. But we don't always realize it because poor people think that rich people don't have disruption. And some rich people think that poor people don't have disruption because they don't have much of anything. They don't think they have real problems. And poor people look at rich people and say, look at how much money you have as if you could buy peace. <laughs> the problem, however, is that peace is not for sale. Disruption comes to attractive people. And you look at them and you're amazed at their beauty and you think, oh, if I could just look like that. And then you get to know them. And you find out that some of the craziest people I have ever met in my life were fine. Somebody ought to back me up in here. You're cute, but you're crazy. You take nice pictures, but you're insane. You're gorgeous, but you're a lunatic. You don't understand. Disruption comes both to the intellectual and to the illiterate. Often in the same degree of intensity, disruption comes. No one is exempt from disruption. The text before us is disruption because disruption is always the gateway to opportunity. <laughs> Look back over your life at the times your life has been disrupted and you thought it was over only to discover that it was the gateway to a new beginning and a new opportunity. Can I get 10 witnesses in the building? Such is the case in the text today. How you adapt to change determines how far God can take you. Your adaptability, your ability to adapt. There are certain people that are inflexible. The gifted, but they're inflexible. The talented, but they're inflexible. They're married, but they're inflexible. They can preach, but they're inflexible. They're intelligent, but they're inflexible. You cannot couple yourself with somebody that's inflexible and expect to grow because they cannot go. They cannot go, therefore they cannot grow because they are inflexible. 
In order to survive the vicissitudes of life, you have to be prepared to go at a moment's notice to, to, to reevaluate your circumstance, to reconstruct your position, to change your plans and alter your strategy and remove your course. You can't be more married to your plan than you are your purpose. I say it again, you can't be more married to your plan than you are your purpose. Some of us love the way we praise the Lord more than we love the Lord we praise. Oh, y'all gonna make me get started early. It's too early for me to grab my head yet, but I feel something creeping up my spine and here something is about to happen in this place. We love the way we praise. And we enjoy what we do more than we do the one we're doing it for. You haven't really praised the Lord until you praised him alone. Until you dance in your living room, you don't have a praise. What you have is a show. Until you have had tears running down your face while you're driving and you were wiping tears out your eyes and said, Lord, you're the only real friend I got. You don't have a relationship with God. Until all hell has broken loose in your life and you said like Job, though he slay me, yet... Our civilizations have survived for years because we had the adaptability to move, to change, to evolve, to travel, to be nomadic in our essence has produced our survival because our culture was not predicated on geography. <laughs> Our culture was not predicated on geography, so we went where the food was, and we went where the water flowed, and we never lost our identity because we changed locations because we were never defined by our location. If you study the history of Africa, you'll begin to understand that before there was a Nigeria or a Ghana or a Congo, there were a people there were Tsetses and uh, there were Yurubans and uh, there were people like that. There were, there were people of different tribes and origins who did not define themselves by the territory they dwelt in, but the language they spoke, the food they ate, the culture they had, the blood in their veins, the way that they moved. It was only when colonialism came in that they start cutting up the land because the Europeans thought the land was valuable, not the people so they split the people to get the land never really recognizing that the land is only as valuable as the people that are on it in our own country we, we, we are here because we migrated here and I'm not talking about us as a people, I'm not talking about the, even the people that we found here when we got here migrated here. And I'm not just talking about white people, but even the people they found when they got here migrated here. Migration has been essential for our survival, the ability to be flexible, the ability to make a move. The ability to pack up your stuff and go where you can plant and where you can build and where you can grow. I'm trying to prep you because change is coming. How do you know change is coming? Because I just spent the last 400 days watching God push a reset button. And whenever God pushes a reset button, it's a sign that change is imminent in our society. Can I get a witness in the room? Is there anybody in here that's been sensing in your spirit that something is about to happen? Your normal has been shattered. Your predictable cannot be predicted. And all of a sudden you're in a place of instability and vulnerability. If you hear me, holler at your boy if you hear me right now. In 
chapter one, we understand that Naomi, she migrates to Moab because of the famine that existed in Bethlehem. Bethlehem is a modern, semi-modern name for Ephrata. Bethlehem means the house of bread. But the house of bread had developed a famine. And when the famine got bad enough, Naomi said, I'm out of here. When the famine, when the famine, I know you've been working with somebody, trying to get them to see, and they will not hear you. Don't worry about it. When the famine gets bad enough, people will migrate. The only reason they stay where they are is that it hadn't gotten bad enough. When they get hungry enough, when they get sick enough, when enough people die, when enough distress comes, you won't have to get into an argument to get them to do better. You won't have to push them. You won't have to beg them. You won't have to cry. You won't have to sleep with them. When it gets bad enough, they'll leave. If they got to leave on a tricycle, they'll get out out of there <laughs> shove somebody and say I got to go I can't stay in a famine so Naomi grabbed up her husband and her two sons and put them in a wagon and headed out for Moab willing to risk the rejection of the Moabites rather than to die in Bethlehem because all change has risk factors. Some people don't experience change because they are so afraid of the risk factor that they are not willing to have a new experience because they're not willing to risk rejection. They choose to die in the famine rather than to risk not being accepted where they're going. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Develop all the programs you want to. Feed everybody you will. Start all your STEM and your STEAM and your this. We do all of that. Start all of that. Do your financial literacy, but there are some folk who who are more comfortable to stay where they are than to evolve to the next level. But there's a few of us that refuse to die in the desert of despair and ignorance. There's something more that we want out of life. And if we got to crawl, if we got to cry, if we got to scratch, if we got to dig, if we got to pull, if we got to take night classes, if we got to take courses after school, if we have to go back to class, we gonna get up from here look at your neighbor and say I'm leaving I'm leaving I'm leaving I'm leaving if your bags ain't packed I'm leaving you I got to go change is imminent I know I was not created to die like this is so then my brothers and sisters when we are introduced to the text we are introduced to it in the midst of a grievous famine the famine is so severe that the cattle have succumbed to it. The sheep have withered in it. All lifestyles are affected in a famine. Fish die, men die, people die, cattle die, sheep die, goats die, chickens die in a famine. When a famine gets severe enough, all life begins to suffer. And most famines are preceded by drought. For it is the drought that is the cause through which the famine ultimately comes. As long as there is water, there will be growth. Oh, that's why I got to be in a wet place. That's why I get happy when it says he leads me beside still waters. I want to be where the waters are. Because if there's water, I can grow. If there's water, I can live. If there's water, I can survive. I got to be in a wet church. I got to have a wet pastor. I got to have a wet wife. I got to have wet children. I got to have a wet house. I got to have something I can grow in. Something I can move in. Deliver me from dry dried up people. I don't need any dried up people. I don't need any dried up people. Look at your neighbor and say, are you dried up? 
If they say yes, move. Run away from them. Get away from them. I got to have what? Because what is possibility? <laughs> and so Naomi loads up the wagon and she decides to change. For some reason, Elimelech is not really, doesn't have a strong voice in the text. This is much about the decision made by a radical woman. Where are my radical women in the house? A radical woman can, is sensitive enough to sense when it's time to move on. A radical woman can sense more in her spirit than you can discern with your metrics and all of your tests and all of your science. I need some radical women. Make some noise in this house. Some, ra some radical women that you know when it's time to leave. The beginning of wisdom is understanding when it's time to get out. Enough is enough. I'm done. Excuse me, it's over. Excuse me, I've had enough. I resign. I'm out. I got to go. It's too dry. Good God of mine. My God, my God, my God. She it up her family. Put them in a wagon and said, I'll take my chances. I'll take my chances with Moab. If I die, I'm going to die in motion. I'm going to die on my way somewhere. I'm going to die clawing and scratching. I'm going to die moving with my wheels turning. If I perish, I perish, but I'm going. Somebody holler, I'm going. I don't mind following you long as you're moving. But don't expect me to submit and get behind a parked car. I will not line up behind a car that ain't moving. Make a mo bust a move, buddy. Bust a move or I'll start a movement. Bust a move or I'll get out of line. I can't spend the rest of my life tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. I'm running out of time. I don't have time to sit behind your car if you're not going anywhere. I've got to go. I want 30 seconds of crazy praise in this. All of that happens in the first chapter. And she gets to Moab and she stays there many, many years in the first chapter and her sons find wives and they're married there. And she has a family and she has a good life there. And over the course of time, things happen. She lost her husband. People die. She lost her husband. But then it got tougher because she lost her son. And then she lost her other son. And all of a sudden, she finds herself in another kind of famine. A famine for love. A famine for love can be as detrimental as a famine for food. No one ran in the house and hugged her. No one wrapped their arms around her at night. No one told her she was a beautiful woman. No one appreciated her as a mother. The love for which she thrived off of had ceased to exist. And she found herself in a famine again. And she says... I'm going back home. All of that's in the first chapter. And so what happens as she announces what she's going to do, it's kind of like this. I don't know what you come to do. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't speak for nobody else but me. I am going home. I'm leaving. I'm out of here. And then comes this character in the Bible, 
one of her daughter-in-laws named Orpah. <laughs> and Orpah is seldom talked about, but I want to spend a few minutes talking about Orpah. Can I talk about Orpah? I want to talk about Orpah because Orpah came out there to her mother-in-law and kissed her goodbye and decided to stay. All three women teach us a different kind of person that we will deal with in life. There are some people that just cannot go with you. Even though they started with you, they can't stay with you. There are certain people in your life that they will kiss you goodbye. Even though they were connected to you, they ate with you, they were related to you, they laughed with you, they followed your customs and they seemed like one of you. But when push comes to shove, they identify themselves as not being fit to make the journey with you because their roots are in their past and not in their future. Their roots are in where they came from and not where they're going. In other words, she was related to Naomi, but she wasn't as related to Naomi as she was to Moab. There are people who are related to you, but deep down they're more related to other things than they are to you. And they will be with you as long as you stay in other things. But the moment you move out of other things, they will drop off because their real commitment is not with you, it's with the environment that you're in. And if anything changes, they will kiss you goodbye. <laughs> Look at somebody say, kiss me now. <laughs> if you're leaving, kiss me now. Ain't no need to drag this thing out 10 more years, kiss me now. If I'm gonna cry, let me cry right now. If I'm gonna have to get over it, let me get over it right now cause I'm going and if you're not going Judas kiss me now why betray us out me with a kiss because you can't go in the spirit of Judas Orpah kisses Naomi goodbye it means I will not be in the upper room I will write no amazing books of the Bible. I will establish no churches. I will do no great works. I was with you as long as you were doing what I expected you to do. But when you change your expectation, <laughs> I said that for somebody who's trying to understand why somebody else left you, they left you because they were more attached to the situation than they were to you. And when you started growing, they were willing to kiss you goodbye. I know you don't want to blow your cover in here, but if you don't care what nobody thinks and you had that experience, make some noise, make a sound, make a sound. Oprah lacks the elasticity, the nimbleness of wit and thought and mind and strength to be able to be flexible enough. She is not dexterous enough. She, she lacks the capacity to be able to evolve with the times. And so she stays in Moab rather than to take a risk. You would be surprised how many people in this room who have allowed fear to paralyze mobility. The paralysis of fear has kept you trapped in a situation that you call the devil. You've rebuked it, you've pleaded the blood on it, you've anointed yourself with oil, and it doesn't change. And the reason it doesn't change is because it's not a demon. It's you. It's your fear. It's your fear of taking a risk. You can't, you can cast out a demon, but you can't cast out you. You talk yourself out of every blessing. You talk yourself out of every progress. If I put you in a good situation, you self-sabotage because you don't think you're worthy to go forward to the next dimension. If I give you new friends, you'll mess it up every time because deep down inside, you're only comfortable amongst the Moabites. <laughs> Have you ever tried to raise somebody who refused to be raised? Next time you run into them, just say, okay, Orpah. They won't know what you're talking about, but just tell them, okay, Orpah. Okay, Orpah, I understand. I understand. You, you, you are a friend of evolution. 
You are afraid of migration. You are afraid of movement. You are afraid of a flow. And you can't walk with God if you're not going to get in a flow. Because our God is a moving God. The very first thing that Genesis teaches us about God is in the beginning, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And from the book of Genesis, where it moved upon the face of the waters, to the book of Revelations, where it said, even so come, Lord Jesus. Throughout the text, the cloud moved, the pillar of fire moved, the rustling in the trees moved, the glory moved. Whenever you walk with God, you've got to be ready with to move because God will migrate from place to place most people are stay where God was rather than to be where God is but I'm too old to be where God used to be and build a monument to where he was I want to be in the movement look at two people that's three people say get in the flow get in the flow get in the flow our God is a moving God our God is a moving God our God is a moving God our God is a flowing God our God God is an evolving God. If you're going to walk with God, he is Ruach. He is breath. He is air. He is breathing. He is motion. He is movement. He is flow. And because he is a moving God, everything that he created moves. The earth moves. The solar system moves. Your breath moves. Your blood moves. The rabbis come to the wailing wall and they move because everything about God is moving. If you're not moving, you're not with God because God is moving. Look at your neighbor and say move. If you can't walk, crawl. If you can't crawl, get in a wheelchair and spin around in a circle. But you got to move or you're going to die. Oh, you're going to get stiff if you don't move. You got to keep moving. Then somebody say keep moving. I talked about Oprah. Let me talk a little bit about Naomi. Naomi. Naomi has lived life. She is an older woman. She has seen spring. She has seen the leaves bud. She has smelt honeysuckle in the air. She has seen the blossoms peek through the buds and add just a touch of color to nature itself. She has smelt the fresh air of springtime. She has felt the misting dew cascade upon the ground and could almost hear the grass grow in the yard. She has been in the morning of life when love was fresh and everything was simple. She has survived the hot summer heat when everything was warm and growing and raised her children and enjoyed her life and gone to the graduation and cried from the balconies as they graduated in the summer of her life. She has survived autumn in her lives. She has watched her face change, her hair change, her friends change, her world change, her situation and circumstance change. Obviously, her perspective is going to be different because whenever fall hangs out with spring, they always have a different point of view. So far, because you hear what I'm saying? For Naomi to hang out with Ruth is fall hanging out with spring. Fall knows things that spring has yet to encounter. Fall understands things that spring will evolve to eventually. It's hard to have a conversation when you have a spring mentality talking to a fall experience. Naomi has a fall experience and she has lived life. She has had such an experience that even though she is bitter and even though she has lost her husband and even though she has lost her sons, she has kept it moving, baby. 
You can say whatever you want to say about her being bitter, but even in her bitterness, she's kept it moving because Naomi comes to teach us that you cannot allow your emotions to stop your movement. <laughs> Feel however you want to feel, but keep it moving. Cry if you got to cry, but keep it moving. Hurt if you got to hurt, but keep it moving. I need some Naomi's in the house. Make some noise. I lost some stuff, but I kept moving. I cried some nights, but I kept moving. I had a broken heart, but I kept moving. I want some survivors to make some noise in this place. Some survivors. Some survivors. I'll take a man. I'll take a woman. I'll take a goat. Anything that survived the death of something. Make some noise. Let me hear you. Come on, let me hear you. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to keep it moving. I'm hurt, but I'm going to keep it moving. I may be bitter, but I'm going to keep it moving. I may cry sometime, but I'm going to keep it moving. Naomi has learned not to make decisions out of her emotions. She said, you may be bitter, but you're going home. You know why? Bethlehem is a house of bread. And there is bread in Bethlehem. And Naomi is going where the bread is. Where the fulfillment is. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so Naomi teaches us not to make permanent decisions off of temporary emotions. Oh, that was worth coming all by itself. Because most of the time I see people who allow their emotions to make decisions for them. And then they suffer the consequences of regret because the emotion passes, but the decision remains. Naomi is not responding to her emotions in making a decision. She's bitter, but she's moving because she is not rooted in her circumstances. She is rooted in her identity. And even though she has been with the Moabites, she still knows who she is. Note to all possible candidates for marriage, don't marry anybody who doesn't know who they are. Note to every CEO, I don't care how many degrees they got, if they don't have a good sense of who they are, leave them alone because they're going to find out in the middle of the job and it may not include you and you don't have time to deal with a trauma case while you're trying to build a building because some of us are traumatized and half out of our mind and we don't know who we are. All we know is who touched us last. You are not who touched you. You are not defined by what you got on. It is not the name you wear, it's the name you have. God says, I will make your name great. And you won't have to wear all those brand names when your name is great. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can't find nobody's name to put on that's any greater than the name he gave me. Because God said, I'll make your name great. Not your title, not your office, not your suit. God said, I will make your name great. And I don't know who it is, but somebody in this room, God is about to make a name for you. He's about to establish you. He's about to lift you up into a better place. He's about to give you something that he couldn't give you earlier because you were unstable. But now that you're getting stable, God is ready to give you what he promised you years ago. You're now going to come into it. You were anointed to be king, but you weren't ready to be king until you kill something. Now now that you got some heads under your feet, now God is about to crown you as king. And if that prophetic word is for you, I dare you to praise him like you're coming into your kingdom. 
Come on into it. 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 I know I'm going to come into it. I know I'm going to come into it. 600,000 people died in the last 400 days in America. And thankfully, I wasn't one of them. And God kept me alive for a reason. I know I'm going to come into it. Some of you got sick, but you survived. God didn't let you survive for nothing. You're about to come into something. The devil wouldn't have fought you like he fought you if you weren't about to come into something. Whoever I'm talking to, you might be online, throw your computer in the air hit yourself over the head with a pillar because God is about to bring you into something. Somebody give me praise. I mean old-fashioned Pentecostal Holy Ghost praise in this house. Come on, Marcus. Come on. Give me praise in this house. Give me praise. You hear that? You hear that? You hear that? That's the way you praise when you know you're not Orpah. That's the way you praise when you know God's got a future for you. That's the way you praise when you know God is about to unlock something for you. Oh God, oh God, I feel it in the room. I stopped preaching and started prophesying. Somebody's about to step into something. Somebody's about to move into new territory. If I'm talking to you, give him a prayer. I don't care if you look like a fool. I don't care if you look silly. I don't care if you mess up your makeup. I don't care if you tear your drawers. Give God a praise in this room. I said I said give God a praise. And so Naomi is about to leave and Ruth said you ain't leaving me. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. 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 That's the way you praise God when you're telling hell, I'm not staying where I was. That's the way you cut the fool in the house of God when you're rebuking every devil that's trying to submit your feet to the ground. Make some noise. That's what I mean by noise. Give God one more time. One more time. One more time. I'm going to give you another chance to tell hell I'm not staying in Moab. And, and so Ruth says, Ruth says to him, can I catch a ride? Can I catch a ride? Can I catch a ride? I'm going with you. Naomi says, I can't have no more sons. She said, no, it's not about your son. It's not about who touched me last. <laughs> It's not about who kissed me last. I got a future if I got to have it by myself. I got a future if I got to go alone. I got a future if mama don't go, if daddy don't go, if sister and brother don't go, I got to go for myself. Am I talking to somebody? Thy God shall be my God. Thy people shall be my people. And where thou dwellest, I will dwell. And where thou diest, I shall die. Chapter 2. Now, Naomi is at home. She has been an immigrant in Moab. Now she is a resident in Bethlehem. All of her relatives live there. She speaks the language. She knows how to cook the food. She understands the music, and she dances like they dance. 
Somebody that's home say, I'm home. I'm home, I'm home. Isn't it funny how your spirit knows when you're home? You know when you're there. Your belly knows it. Your guts know it. Your smile knows it. You're walking around with a silly grin on your face because you know you're home. Look at somebody and say, I'm home. <laughs> Naomi, who was an immigrant, is now at home. Ruth, who was a resident in Moab, is now an immigrant. This is why Ruth is important, and I'll be done. If Ruth had not moved to Bethlehem, David would have never been king. He would have not, his birth was predicated on Ruth's courage to be an immigrant. It takes courage to be an immigrant. It takes courage to come out of your familiar and be in an unfamiliar place. It takes courage to walk into an atmosphere where you don't have the beat and you don't understand the rhythm and you don't understand the flow and you don't understand the protocol, but the Lord sent me here with a prophetic word you are in chapter two. You have just turned the page. You have just stepped into a revolution. You have stepped into a new place and you've got to be prepared to approach it with the thoughts of an immigrant. Everybody's been prophesying to you, telling you that you're next and you're next and you're coming into your kingdom and, and it's about to happen in your life. But what they didn't tell you is your destiny always feels like immigration because your destiny does not line up with your history. So when you come into your destiny, you, you, come on, Shaka. When you, when you come into your destiny, you're not going to feel the sense of celebration that you expected because even though you prayed for it and you asked for it, you're going to feel funny in it because you step into it as an immigrant. You come into it as an immigrant. Chapter 2, Ruth is now an immigrant in her destiny. She, she's an immigrant in her prophecy. When God gives you what he told you he was going to give you, it's not going to feel like what you thought it was going to feel like I keep trying to teach people that success doesn't feel successful because when you first walk into it, it's going to feel foreign. And if you're weak minded, you're going to go back. If you're not willing to feel strange for a while, if you're not willing to have people looking at you funny, if you're not willing to have people rolling their eyes, if you're not willing to glean behind the reapers, but Ruth said, I may look funny, and I may dress funny, and I may move funny, and I may talk funny, but I ain't going nowhere. I need some tough people now. You got to be tough to be blessed. You got to be strong to be blessed. It takes courage to be blessed. Right now, lift your hands. Right now. I hereby declare and decree that you will have the courage to walk in the door that God is about to open up for you. At the end of this message, an opportunity is going to come to you that it's going to feel foreign and it's out of character and it's out of your norm. But I decree and declare that you will not back up from it. You will step into it. You will seize it. You will give birth in it. 
it you will make it your own in the name of Jesus if you receive it receive it with a praise 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 you may be laying on your couch but receive it with a praise you may be at your kitchen table but receive it with a praise you may be watching over your phone but receive it with a praise praise him until hell gets nervous praise him until demons tremble praise him until sickness gets up off of you slap your neighbor and say praise him I just turned the page the devil should have killed me in chapter one but the devil is a liar he's a liar he's a liar he's a liar I just turned the page everybody turn the page and give God a praise like you lost your mind I just turned the page. I just turned the page. The reason I blocked your number is I turned the page. The reason I blocked you on my Facebook, I just turned the page. Somebody shout in this house. Make some noise in this house. This is a place, this is a place where you give birth. This is a place where the door is open. This is a place the Bible said she came in as an immigrant. None of the other women would have nothing to do with her. They were getting all that they could get going on about the business. She said, that's all right, I'll catch what I can. I'll grab what I can get. But while she was moving, the Bible says she hopped up on Boaz's field. Listen at that, she hopped up on Boaz's field. You just gonna happen to be at the right place at the right time and meet the right person. Uh, you just gonna happen to be, who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Your Holy Ghost ought to let you know I'm talking to you. You just gonna happen, it's just gonna be happenstance. You didn't plan it that way, you didn't expect it that way, it just happened that way. Who am I talking to make some noise? Yeah, 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 yeah. I want everybody in the room to shift. Uh, change seats with somebody. Change chairs with somebody. Change anything you gotta change. Uh, tell them something has got to change. Uh, something has got to change. Uh, something has got to move. Uh, something has got to flow. Uh, something has got to break. Uh, I can't stay where I was. Uh, I just turned the page. Uh, every yoke has got to break. Uh, Every wall has got to come down. Every barrier, oh, I feel like preaching now. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost in this room. Somebody help me praise him. I got this anointing on me and I can't get it off. I need some 30 something, 40 sort of. Give God some praise for me. Help me dance this off. Help me shout this off. Help me leave this. Everybody in here just leap for me. I'm gonna leap into it. I'm gonna step into it. I'm gonna move into it. I'm gonna flow into it. Give him a praise. Come on, give me. I said, give him a praise. I said, give him a praise. Don't make him take it. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Out of your belly. Out of your spirit. Out of your soul. Open up your mouth and give God a praise.
Quickly, quickly, I got to give you the rest of this prophecy. When she stepped... She stepped, when she stepped on it, she didn't own it. When she stepped on it, she didn't own it. She was an immigrant. She wasn't even a rightful worker. She was gleaning behind the reapers. And somebody saw her. Somebody saw you. For her, it was Boaz. She just happened. <laughs> Somebody's getting this word. I can feel it. I can feel virtue going out to somebody. I can feel the spirit of prosperity going into somebody. Who's, who's pulling that spirit of prosperity? Who's pulling it down? Who's pulling it down? Who's pulling down that spirit of increase? Who's pulling it down right now? Who is pulling it down? Who's pulling down that spirit of influence? Who's pulling it down? You just happen. And this is the word of the Lord. In chapter 2, in three verses, she goes from working in the field. To owning the field that she used to work in. Oh, y'all can't handle it. Let me try y'all. Can y'all handle it over there? Can y'all handle it over there? Do you believe that you could start out working in something you're going to end up owning? Do you believe that? Do you believe that you could start out catching whatever they left for you? The Bible said that they are handfuls on purpose. And she was just catching whatever they dropped. Not complaining. Didn't get mad, didn't get bitter. Wasn't spiteful, she was just catching whatever they dropped. Just glad to be in the number. She was an immigrant. She was an immigrant in a field of dreams. She was an immigrant. Anybody who saw where she came from would not make a connection with where she is. Anybody who saw what you used to be would not make a connection. With where you are. And that's why you don't complain about nothing. Whatever they drop, you just go ahead and take it up. You just grateful because you, you got the spirit of an immigrant. You're going to do whatever you have to do to pull up, to get up on your feet. You're just, just working whatever, whatever door God opens you, just go through it. And somebody saw her, and all of a sudden she ends up married to the owner of the field, which by virtue of that marriage makes her own the field she used to work in. Now, I'm, I'm finished all with this. The Holy Ghost told me to tell somebody in this room, own it. Watch this. The Holy Ghost said, own it. You've been playing with it. You've been visiting it. You've been hoping for it. You've been praying for it. Own it. You're already in it. You're already doing it. 
but in your head you ain't owned it. Let, let me tell you why you haven't owned it yet. Because you're scared it's going to leave. And you can't totally settle into it because you're afraid of it. If it looks like I'm looking at you, I am. You're afraid it won't stay. You're afraid it won't last. You're afraid it's not real. And you don't want to be hurt again. And you don't want to be disappointed anymore. And, and, and you don't want to go through any more heartache. And you're scared to relax. You already know what you're going to do. But you're afraid to own it. Because of the intensity of the rejections of your past, you, you, you take the vows, you give the applause, but you won't own it. Because you've been abandoned before. And the Holy Ghost said, own it. What God is getting ready to do in your life is so real that if you don't own it, you might as well have stayed in Moab. Do you not know you are living in the field of your dreams? Your today's reality was yesterday's miracle. It was yesterday's miracle. It was yesterday's fantasy. It was inconceivable that it would be possible that that would happen for you. And God said, I'm just, all I need you to do is just own it. This ain't nothing going to change on the outside. This is going to change on the inside. It's just how you perceive it. I ain't talking about changing nothing on the outside. I'm talking about something in your heart. I'm not talking about signing no papers. I'm talking about your heart. Holy Ghost said, own it. Who am I talking to in this place? Can I obey the spirit? I got to obey the spirit. I got to obey the spirit for just a moment. Because when I go back to Dallas, I don't want to have this hanging over my head. God said, own it. God said, own it. God said, own it. You, you don't feel worthy of it. You don't feel worthy of it. You don't feel worthy of it. But God said, own it. It's by His grace. It's by His grace. It's by His grace. Somebody say, it's by His grace. It's by His grace. If you just own it, it'll come into your spirit and not go. If you just own it, if you just walk into it, if you just walk into it and stop wrestling with it and stop always being so hard on you and just believe, God said, I'm waiting on you to own it. I'm waiting on you to own it. You can't catch it because somebody got to catch you. Own it. God said, own it. Oh, God said, own it. God said, own it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Own it. Own it. Own it. Own it. Own it. It don't matter what the people say. I'm talking to that voice inside of you. God said, own it. God said, own it. God said, own it. 
God said, own it. Ah, God said, own it. 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 Come on, make a praise. Somebody make a praise. Somebody make a praise. Just a praise. Just a praise. Own it. In your life. In your soul. In your personal life. In your inner life. God said, own what he's doing inside of you. Just own it. Just own it. Just own it. Just own it. You can't hardly see yourself in it, but God said, own it. Own it. Just own it. Just own it. Stop struggling with it. Just own it. Stop doubting it. Just own it. Just own it. Just own it. Just own it. Lift your hands and open your mouth before God. Own it. Own it. Own it. Own it. Own it. Own it. I have an anointing for you. Will you receive it? Own it. Own it. Own it. Own it. Own it. The spirit of prosperity. The spirit of increase. The spirit of increase. The spirit of Osha. Move. The spirit of increase. God said own it. God said own it. God said own it. Don't just hope for it. Don't just think about it. Don't just pray for it. God said own it. Walk in it and own it and own it and own it and own it and accept it for yourself. Open your mouth and give God praise. I wish I could get all out of the crowd. God said own it. 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 You 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 own it. This is yours. This is yours. Today is a special day. Today is a special day. Today is a special day. Where is he? Where is he, Lord? Where is he, Lord? Where is he, Lord? Where is he, Lord? Brother in the sunglasses, yellow jacket, come here for right quick. Come here real quick. Real quick, real quick, real quick. Real quick, real quick, real quick. I don't know what you're trying to do, trying to be. God said, own it. God said, own it. God said, own it. Stop putting it off. Stop delaying it. Say not. There are yet four months, and then comes the harvest. Holy Ghost said, on it. Ah! Oh! On it. Step into it. Step! There is a new you. Don't even feel like you. Don't even feel like you. But God said, on it. Can I pray for you? On it. It's a new you. It's a new you. It's a deeper you. It's a fuller. It's a richer. It's a, it's a richer, fuller you. It's a brighter you. Holy Ghost said, own it. Holy Ghost said, own it. Lift your hands, everybody. The Spirit of God is taking over this place. All up in the balcony, the Spirit of God is falling. All up in the balcony. I feel faith. I can see faith pouring down the walls from the balcony. The Spirit of God is in this place. Hallelujah. There's somebody in the back. Faith is dripping on you right now. All you got to do is own it. All you got to do is own it. All you got to do is own it. All you got to do. You want it? Own it. Just own it. All you got to do is own it. All you got to do is own it. All you got to do is own it. Lift your hands. The anointing is in this place. Open your mouth and talk to God right now. You talk to God. You, 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 you. With your struggling self. With your struggling self. With your wrestling self. With your conflicted self. Talk to God. He wants you. Ow! Oh! Own it. Own it. Own it. Own it. I can't leave till I get here. Own it. Own it. Own it. You've been through so much. You've had so much trauma. You've been through so much pain. You can't hardly believe it. But God said, all the trauma you have endured will not stop what he has prophesied over your life. All the hurt and all the heartache and all the shame and all the pain that you have ingested on the inside with nobody to talk to and nobody to speak to. And you walk the floor at night 
And God told me to tell you that he heard you. He said he heard you. He heard you. He heard you. And today is your day. As I lay hands on you today, the Holy Ghost is going to break that yoke in your life. You are not going home with that pain another day. Today. Ah, today. 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 Oh, no, no, you're going to let it out. Ah, today, you're going to let it all the way out. All the way out. All the way out. Today, you're going to hold it. Hold it, go. Sit it, sure. Today, 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 hold it for me. Receive it, I receive it, I receive it. Yeah, yeah, you got to receive it, because I'm going to pray for you till you get it. I'm going to pray for it till it breaks. I'm going to pray for it till you get away. I'm going to pray for it. Oh! Thank you. Oh! Oh! Somebody open your mouth and holler! I want to watch a moment. Lift your hands. Hold the music. Open your mouth. God said he wants his house to be filled with your mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With your mouth. With your mouth. With your mouth. Come on, Brother Battle. I got an anointing for you. I'm going to break that trauma. I'm going to break that trauma that's been killing you. You've been breaking it for everybody else, but I'm going to break it for you. Ah! Hey, hey. I'm going to break it for you. I'm going to break it for you. It comes out today. It comes out today. And you're going to own this new peace and this new power and this new place. And the only reason hell has been fighting you is because you just... Stepped into chapter two. Somebody shout chapter two. You are in the second chapter. Turn the page. You are in the second chapter. Turn the page. You are in the second chapter. Turn the page. Block some numbers. Let some people go. Let people talk. Turn the page. Turn the page. Turn the page. Get rid of the anger. And turn the page. Turn the page. Turn the page, young man. Turn the page. Turn the page. Everything God has for you is in the next chapter. It's waiting on you. It's waiting on you. It's waiting on you. Turn! Turn! The anointing is here. The anointing is here. That hurt, that bitterness, that little girl that you keep trying to protect, that little girl that you fight everybody away from, that little girl, we're going to put her to rest. Shanda. We're going to put her to rest. We're going to put her to rest. There's a little girl down in you. There's a little bitty old girl, and I hear her crying. I hear her crying, and today she gets free. Hey, glory, glory. Today, glory. today she gets free. Today she gets free. Today she gets free. Today she gets. Lift your hands, everybody. Open your mouth. Holy Ghost is working. Holy Ghost is working. Holy Ghost is working. Holy Ghost is working. When the Holy Ghost starts working, every you. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't be secretly scared. Don't be secretly scared. Own it. Own it. 
Mama, you're in the field of your dreams. You're in the field of your dreams. You're in the field of your dreams. Girl, you're in the field of your dreams. Girl, you're in the field of your dreams. Don't let the enemy pollute it or dilute it or discourage you or make you bitter. You're in the field of your dreams. You're in the field. How many people since you just stepped into the field of your dreams? You stepped into the field of your dreams. You stepped into the field of your dreams. We got to... Ah! The field. The field. The field. The field. Success don't feel successful. It was 10 years before I looked back at my life and saw what everybody else saw. Because in the middle of it, all I saw was trying to manage the stress of being where I was. And I didn't know I was in my promised land. I was in my promised land on the outside, but I was tormented in my own head. I was tormented in my own head. And it didn't matter how much I fixed up the outside because I was tormented in my own head. And as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So is he. I don't care what you drive. I don't care what you wear. If you got hell in your head, you got hell in your life. Am I helping anybody? Own it. One more time, just lift your hands. I got to stop. I'm old school. I'll lay hands on everything in here. I will, I will lay hands on everything in here. I came out the old church. I came out the old church where we would, would not let you go to hell. We would not let you wither up and die right in the midst of us. We would not let you break down and shatter into pieces. Not yet. You got too much to do. You got too much to do. Come here. Come here. I'm pulling you out. I'm pulling you out. I'm pulling you out. I'm pulling you out. I'm pulling you away from some people. I'm pulling you into your destiny. I'm pulling you out. I'm pulling you right now. I'm pulling you out. I'm setting you aside. And I want you to own the person that God said you were in spite of the person you knew before. I want you to own it. Own it right now. Lift your hands, church. This, is, this, this word comes against all the trauma that we have swallowed for months and months and months and months in our personal lives, in our professional lives, in our family lives. And you've come here, we don't get to get together this often. I don't have time to play games. I don't, I don't care. I don't care about what day it is. This is my opportunity to speak life to you. You are a king. You're not perfect. You make mistakes. You do stupid stuff. You hide it. You are a king. Half of the dumb things you do is because you don't know who you are. And the reason you don't know who you are is that you didn't have anybody to tell you who you are. Not the way you needed to hear it. But today, as John the Baptist, I point at you and I'm telling you, you're bigger than your circumstances. You're better than your darkest fear. Come here, let me lay my hands on you. I want to lay my hands on you as a father would a son. I want to lay my hands on you till something in you opens up. I want to lay your ha my hands on you until you get the change you've been waiting on. I want to lay my hands on you. Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. No hiding. No surrendering. No holding back. No fighting. No holding in here. As I lay my hands on you, today is your day. It's all right. Let the tears come because God is breaking you open so that he can get in and do what he wants to do. He wants in. He wants in. He wants all the way in. He wants in. He wants in, he wants in boy. He wants in. Ah! Ah! Yeah. You don't.
don't know who you are. But this day, this old man from Dallas flew down here to tell you. You're bigger than your fears. You're bigger than your doubts. You're bigger than what you didn't get. You're bigger than what you didn't see. You're bigger than what broke you. You're bigger than what broke you. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Come on. Come on, man. Let it out. Let it out. You're bigger than what broke you. And what was meant to break you is going to bless you. It's going to rise up. And you're going to rise up. And you're going to come into your kingdom. And you're going to own it. And you're going to own it because this word declares it. And it is so. How come I didn't get it? How come I never get it? How come it never happened for me? Today it happens for you. 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 Clap your hands and give God glory. Clap your hands and shout unto God. Clap your hands and rejoice before God. Clap your hands and give him some praise. Clap your hands. I want to seal. Somebody turn the page right now. Turn the page. It says chapter 2. I'm in the second chapter. Say it again. I'm in the second chapter. Uh -huh. I'm in the second chapter. That means we leave Orpah. We leave Moab. We leave the Moabites. We leave all the confusion. That means we're willing to feel funny in a new place. You willing to feel funny in a new place? Yes, sir. We're willing to feel funny in a new place. It's going to grow on you. You're going to own it. It's going to take a minute. Don't go by your feelings. You can't trust them. You can't trust the way you feel about it. Your feelings are still in Moab. But you are out. And he whom the Son has set free is free indeed. This is a word of deliverance. How many people are glad you're in the house right now? I know we are living in radical times. I know that many of us have been sick and many of us are not working. And many of us have lost people. I understand all of that. I'm not insensitive to all of that. I grew up off of government cheese. Okay. I raised my daughter off a of wick. I understand what hard times are. But as many as can respond, I want 40 people to rush up here with $1,000 and claim this seed as your word of prophecy today. I want you to come and just stand right up front. Stand right up front. I don't, I'm not going to go in no trance. I'm not going to prophesy. You have to sense this is my liberating word. I own this word. It was for me. I have it. It is within my power to sow it, and I'm going to do it. There's somebody in the balcony. You want to give, but you don't want to come down. You come all the way down. I don't care if you give it on your text. I don't care how you give it. I want you to respond to this word because this word has specific significance to you, and I want you to respond to it right now. You're watching online. You've been crying. The Holy Spirit has been speaking to you. The power of God has arrested you. The anointing of God is upon you. I want you to sow right where you are because something just broke. Something just broke in your spirit. If something broke in your spirit, make some noise in this place. I don't care if you don't have two quarters to rub together. Make some noise. You can 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 make some noise. 
There are some people in this room, there's some things tied up in process. I don't know whether it's litigation. I don't know whether you're in the middle of it, but you're on the verge of a breakthrough. I want you to sow in this moment. Because it's not by might nor by power, it's going to be by my spirit, saith the Lord. God is going to be your secret weapon. And he is going to get it done. And I want you to come. And I want you to sow. That's right. Come down out of that balcony. Come down. The anointing is in this place. I don't care if you're giving it on your phone. I want you to stand here as an act of defiance. As an act of ownership. As an act of authority. All over the internet. All over the Zoom. I want you to sow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The fear will hold you back. Now, it ain't fear holding you back if you ain't got it. That's broke. That ain't fear. But so many times, we don't take the risk to move forward or we self-sabotage. It can be everything from love coming into your life to a promotion, to a new circle of friends that are coming into your life and you feel awkward and you feel out of place. God let that happen to you. Own it. God let that happen to you. Own it. And even though your old friends say, oh, now you acting funny, let them say whatever they want to say. This word is for you. This word is for you. People are always running their mouths, but don't let them run your business. I want everybody else to get the best you got. It might be $100. It might be $20. It might be a KFC coupon. I don't care what the best is you got. I want you represented in the sowing. I want everybody watching on the internet to sow into this moment on some level. $10, $50, $100, $1,000, $10,000, $1,000,000, $1, I don't care what it is, on some level. I want you to acknowledge that this is your word. And you know why I want you to do it? Because in chapter 2, Ruth comes to Bethlehem in the time of the harvest. So happened that she stepped into the right place at the time of the harvest. There will be a harvest on your pain. This shot up. There will be a harvest on your sacrifice. There will be a harvest on the nights you cried and nobody saw it. Glory to God. There's somebody in this place you don't normally sow, you don't normally give to churches, and you're skeptical of preachers, but the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, and you're wrestling inside of yourself. You can be Orpah if you want to. I don't mind. I'm good. But you can sow into this moment, into this word, into this flow, into this glory. Everybody get your best seed. And lift it up for God. There won't be a $1,000 prayer and a $500 prayer and a $10 prayer and a $50 prayer. It's going to be one prayer. Because all of us are lifting up what we can on the level we're on. And the only thing I ask you, if, if you have that 1000 and the Holy Spirit is nudging at you, before I pray, get up here right now. Last call. Last call. It is your obedience that God is watching over. It's not, your, it's not your money. It's your obedience. The Bible said obedience is better than sacrifice. Come on, they're still coming. They're still coming. They're still coming. The reason I want you to come, you could get from your seat, but the reason I want you to come is I want you to take position. Because we are now in chapter 2. My God, it's a bunch of people coming. The rest of you lift up your seed before God. Lift up your seed. As for me and my house, 
we will serve the Lord. Lord, we thank you for Pastor Keon's birthday <laughs> because it created an opportunity for us to hear this word. The day will come and the day will go. But it created a moment for us to get a prophetic utterance. And today we thank you because something that we've been needing to do is turn the page and to fully enter into and embrace the second chapter of our lives. I pray for every person who's been tormented in chapter one. Every person who has cried their way through chapter one who lost loved ones and lost friends and lost jobs and lost properties and lost confidence in themselves in chapter one. I pray that they would really turn the page and step into chapter two. I pray for everyone whose heart has been broken, who's been lied to, cheated on, betrayed, belittled, and denied. You can't stay in chapter one God's got better things for you in chapter 2. you watching me online. You need to hear this. Let chapter 1 go. This is the second chapter in your life. It's so necessary. It's so necessary. If you knew what God had in front of you, it would be easy to let go of what God had behind you. It's not hard. I want you to change the way you talk to yourself. The way that you talk to yourself is keeping you in chapter one. And I don't want you to say that it's so hard. I want you to say, I'm so strong. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. The Bible said we are snared by the words of our own mouth. Lift it up. Lift it up. You watching online? Lift it up. Lift it up. I can't see you, but God can see you. You in the balcony? God can see you. Lord, I said to them what you said to me. I didn't come to take anything. I came to give something. I came to impart something. I came to leave something. I came to be a blessing. In chapter 2, Ruth owns the field. In chapter 2, somebody sees her. In chapter 2, she steps into the field of her dreams, even though the field feels funny. The people whose hands are raised, the field feels funny. It don't feel like it's really you. And when you're in it, you feel like an imposter. You feel like an imposter because all of your memories are in Moab. You're an immigrant, but you're going to be an owner. Father, bless these people in a supernatural way. Open up the windows of heaven and bless them and fortify them as they sow this seed. Other people can sing to them. Other people can preach to them. Other people can greet them. Other people can direct their cars and parking, but can't nobody offer up a sacrifice for you but you. This is our sacrifice. Let the fire fall on it. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have an envelope, leave it on the steps. If you're giving by phone, text to give. If you got an extra minute, don't leave. I got further to go than any of you. And I'm going home in just a minute. If you give me five more minutes, it's been, how long has it been since I've been here? Two years? Yeah, two or three years since I've been here. So I ought to be good for five minutes. I ought to be good for five minutes. Please don't leave. I should stand at the door. Please don't leave. Steve, please don't leave. There's some women who got a breakthrough in here. They ain't going to never be the same again. Sisters, make some noise. There's some brothers that got a breakthrough in here that you've been needing for a long time. I want every man in the house to make some noise. Give me one minute. 
Give me one minute. I don't need nobody to say nothing. We don't need to be entertained with our children. Give me one minute. This September, I will have been preaching 45 years. When you do something 45 years, you got nothing to prove. <laughs> if you ain't looked up and preached a good sermon in 45 years, you need to quit. 45 years of ministry. Receive it. Bless it while they're receiving it. It's harvest time. Clap your hands. It's harvest time. I want, you to, I want you to think about owning. I want you to think about owning. I don't care that you don't have no money. I'm just asking you to think about it. I I'm asking you to get a mentality of winning. I want you to get around people that are winning. Even if you're gleaning behind them, get in the field of your dreams. Every head bowed, every eye closed. There's a backslider in this house. And there's a person that doesn't know Jesus. And I don't know whether somebody invited you or you just came. But all the while the music and the ministry was going forward, something on the inside of you recognizes that God is in this place. And I know you feel a little bit funny because it's not the world you spend most of your time in, but it's the world God is calling you to. I'm not asking you to give an offering. I'm asking you to give yourself. And I want you to come to this altar because you belong in the kingdom. I want you to get up and come forward and stand in front of me and say, preacher, pray for me. I've been living in Moab, but I need Jesus. Come right up front. Come on. I don't care what you did. I don't care who you did it with. I don't care what you strung out on. I don't care what you've been into. I don't care if you just climbed down off a pole. If the Holy Spirit is calling you, don't resist it. Come. Come right now. If you're watching online, if you're watching online, if prayer is going out online right now, as you open your heart to give your life to Jesus, Give me just one moment. I haven't even three minutes. If you're wrestling with it and you really want to come, but you're wrestling with it and you're afraid you won't be able to keep your vow, but you're wrestling with it and you want to come, get up. I'm going to wait 60 seconds. Come on. 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 I'm going to tell you something. It takes a lot of faith to do an addition in a church. You don't know it. They just built that balcony on there. They just added an, a center on to this place. They're doing a lot of things. They built it for you. They didn't know your name, but they built it for you. Built it for you. Can you imagine God has somebody building something for you? God said, I'll give you houses you didn't build and vineyards you didn't grow. They built it for you. Pastor Keon, would you come and stand with me? I must decrease. 
he must increase. I am not the watchman in Houston. I'm the watchman in Dallas. But this young man is a watchman in this city. I don't want anybody to be left out of this because this is getting serious. The world is getting serious. They say over the next 10 days, we're going to break all records for heat in this country, breaking all records. The world is shaking. We got diseases. We got heat. We got conflict in the Middle East. We got everything. I don't know whether to read my newspaper or my Bible. They're looking just alike. They're looking just alike, man. My Bible and my newspaper are looking just alike. If ever was a time for you to get serious about God, it is now. It is now. I've been high. I know what high is. It ain't worth it. I know what drunk is. It ain't, it ain't worth it. I know what sex is. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. We believe in being the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. This is a city set on a hill. Oh my God, what a powerful service we just heard. That music by Pastor Mike, oh my God. And, and celebrating our pastor, Pastor Kian Henderson. And what about that word from Bishop T.D. Jakes? Listen, I believe you shouldn't hear that word just once because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. So right now you can go back and watch that whole sermon and relieve that experience. Here at the Lighthouse, we believe in being the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. This is a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. And a lot of you are asking, how can I plug in? How can I be a part of what God is doing in this season? Listen, there are many ways to connect. You have all the information at the bottom of your screen. You can text the number and you can be plugged in to what God is doing in this day and age. And one of the ways you can plug in is by giving by giving and all the information you need to give is at right at the bottom of your screen listen this gospel is going to the ends of the earth to the four corners of the earth and we need the money to do what we got to do every single day but i don't want to leave without praying for you because i believe even as we're celebrating pastor kian henderson today with all the special guests listen you are also special to god and i begin to decree and i pray over you today that you are the head and not the tail you are above and not beneath and you were blessed and this is going to be the best week of your life in the mighty name of jesus we pray like we say in lighthouse we love you and there's nothing you can do about it god bless you see you soon hey everybody what's going on it's pk here and listen i want to tell you that i get so many dms so many messages of people saying pastor how can i connect with you I love your messages, but going through YouTube is kind of difficult. Where can I come to a centralized place? We heard you, and that's why we created Lighthouse 2.0. Lighthouse 2.0 is our tribe. It's our village. It's the place where all of the people who say, I want PK to be my online pastor, and PK says, I want you to be my online member. This is the place where we go, the watering hole, the ecosystem, where we all come to grow together, and it is exclusively for you they're getting ready to put a link up on the screen right now that shows you how you make that exclusive step and everybody can't get in so you better take first movers advantage and get in while you can fit in i can't wait to see you inside of 2.0 may god bless you and let's do this thing for christ